For the last video in our series of naming compounds, we're going to learn how to name and write formulas for acids and bases. So for us, we're going to follow Arrhenius's definition of an acid. Um, there are lots of definitions for acids. We're going to keep with the simple one for now. And we're going to look at how a base and an acid is named, especially if it's a binary acid or a polyatomic acid. So we're going to start with binary acids. And again, as I said before, we're going to use Arrhenius's definition, and we're going to say that these binary acids always take the form H something. So in this case, I put an X in there. But it's always one ion, so an H and a single ion, like a single element. You can easily identify an acid because its formula will start with an H ion. Now that won't always be true, but again, I'm going back to Arrhenius's definition of an acid, so this will be true. The thing will start with an H. So look for an H in the beginning. And when we name these acids, they're always going to take this generic form. A hydro, the name of the ion that we're sticking in there that's been shortened, with an ic and then an acid. So take a look at HF. If you have HF, it follows the rule. It starts with an H. And then it's got a fluorine or a fluoride ion. So we're going to call it hydrofluoric acid. So the hydro, the fluor for the fluorine, the ic, and the acid. HCl is hydrochloric acid. And H2S is hydrosulfuric acid. So again, the S is sulfur. So you call it hydrosulfic or hydrosulfuric acid. It does not matter how many H's you need, two H's, one H, three H's. The important thing is that there are two elements, an H and another single element. That will make it a binary acid. Polyatomic acids will, are different in that they have longer formulas. They will generally take the form beginning with an H and then ending with a series of elements, and usually one of those elements is an O. So I've abbreviated it H, X, Y, Z. Um, and polyatomic acids are slightly harder to name in that they will always take one of two forms of names. If you look at the polyatomic acid and its ion, of course it's going to be made of a hydrogen ion, but if the negative ion, the, the anion, ends in an A-T-E or an I-D-E, you're going to name it blank ic acid. So if there was something that had an 8, you'll chop off the 8, you'll add an ic in its place, and you'll make it an acid. If the anion ended in an ITE, then you're going to call it a blank us acid. So it'll be um, take the anion, chop off the ITE, and replace it with an OUS, and then put the word acid after. Looking at the first one, we have HC2H3O2. Now, we have to split it into its cation and its anion. So we'll split it right here and say that we have our H, and then our anion will be our acetate ion, A-C-E-T-A-T-E. -E. So if it's an 8 acid, as we saw over here, that we're going to actually take that and change the ending to ic. We take the 8 ending, make it an ic ending, and make it acetic acid. Again, let's take a look at the next one. We have to break it, um, separating the anion from the cation, and we'll split it right at the H again. And now you've got a ClO3 ion, or an anion, and that's a chlorate uh, ion, and the 8 is going to become an ic. So instead of being a chlorate ion, it'll become chloric acid. Okay. Why no hydro? There's no hydro at the beginning of these. It's not hydrochloric acid, because these are polyatomic acids. The word hydro only comes in when there's a binary acid. Okay, how about SO3? So if we have H2SO3, we'll split it, and our SO3 ion is a sulfite ion. And as we can see over here on the left, anything that ends in ITE is going to make an us acid. So this is going to become sulfurous or sulfus acid. So I'm going to type in sulfurous acid, where the ite becomes an us, sulfurous acid. The last one I want to try here is H3PO4. Split it again, and our PO4 ion is a phosphate. If it's a phosphate ion, that ATE ending is going to get chopped off, and in its place, we will put the IC. 
And in this case, it's actually phosphoric acid. If you said phosphic acid, we'd let that slide. But generally, chemists go by the longer name, phosphoric acid. What about bases? For now, we're going to stick with Arrhenius' theory, and we're going to say that bases will always end with a hydroxide anion. So bases will always take the form of an unknown or random ion, metal probably, with an OH at the end. So you can easily identify a base because its formula will end in an OH ion. Bases are named like you would name any other ionic compound. So if we take NaOH, NaOH is a sodium and a hydroxide, so the name is sodium hydroxide. MgOH2 it's going to be magnesium and a hydroxide, so it's just magnesium hydroxide. And students will often ask, well, isn't that magnesium dihydroxide? There are two hydroxides. But again, if you're dealing with ions, you never use a prefix to describe the number. This, a good chemist will be able to figure out how many hydroxides are there simply by looking at the charges on the hydroxide and the charge on the magnesium. So pause the video for a second and try and figure out what the formulas for um, FeOH3 will be and NH4OH. How'd you do? FeOH3 is iron 3 hydroxide. Remember, you have three hydroxides. Each hydroxide is going to take a negative one charge. So you've got a total of negative three from the hydroxides. So you need a positive three from the iron. So it'll be iron three with a plus three charge hydroxide. The bottom one is NH4. It's going to split right here and you'll have your cation as NH4 or the ammonium ion and your anion is the hydroxide ion. Now pause the video again and try a few on your own. We've got a mixture of polyatomic and binary acids. So in the top there, um, try and figure out different names and then in the bottom, write formulas for those acids. How'd you do? The first one, H2C2O4, we're going to split right here and take the H out of play there and our anion is a C2O4 ion which is known as oxalate. Oxalate, we take the 8, drop it, add an IC and we get oxalic acid. HNO3, split it again into a cation and an anion and our anion is a nitrate, drop the 8, add the ic, we've got nitric acid. Okay. The third one, we, when we split it, we have a sulfite ion, I-T-E. That sulfite, we're going to drop and add an O-U-S, so for sulfurous acid. And the final one is a binary acid, so our BR is a bromide. And so we now need the hydro part to identify this as a binary acid, so it's hydrobromic acid. If we turn it around, hydroiodic acid, the hydro part lets us know that it's going to be H and I only, two um, elements because it's binary. The iodic part here, IO means iodine is going to be involved, and we've got H and I. We know this because hydrogen takes a plus one and iodine takes a minus one, so we don't need to play around with two hydrogens or multiple iodines because their charges cancel. If we have nitrous acid, the us used to be an ite. So we work backwards. We say, well, that's nitrite. Nitrite is an NO2 with a minus one charge. And so how many hydrogens will we need to, to balance out that minus one? We'll need one. So we'll put an H in the front followed by an NO2. Total charge on that acid is zero. Chromic acid. Well, if it was a chromic, ooh, was it chromide or was it chromate? If it were chromide, that would make it binary because it would just be an H and a CR. But if it were just an H and a CR, we would have a hydro in the name. So it must have been chromate. So our ic used to be a chromate, and a chromate is a CrO4 ion. Okay, well, what charge does the CrO4 ion take? It actually takes a minus two charge and if it's minus two I'm gonna need two hydrogens in order to balance that out. I want to end this video a little bit differently. I want to look at water because it's kind of a funny compound um, and its properties may change depending on how you look at it. 
or what situation you're in. So if I were to write water in the normal form that you usually see it, H2O, that sends some signals about it. Um, what does it tell you? Is it an acid or a base? How would you name it if I wrote H2O? Then I want to switch it around and write water's formula as HOH. It's the same thing. It's two H's and one O. All I've done is unscramble the name a little bit. But the formula gives you a different feel, and it might give you some different information. So below in the comment section, talk about it. What, what do the two different names tell you about what's going on and what properties you should expect from water? Good luck, everybody. Enjoy the conversation.